Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to solve a system of nonlinear equations um, using elimination. And for this one, elimination doesn't always work with nonlinear equations. You have to have um, both a linear term and a quadratic term in this case to cancel out. So the x squared and the x could cancel out or my y squareds and my y could cancel out. Um, if you cannot eliminate, then you have to use substitution. With this one, what we have is the first one happens to be a circle, and the second one has an ellipse. So if you beforehand start thinking about what kinds of answers you could have, um, the reason I know the first one is a circle is because the number in front of x squared and y squared is the same. And for the second one, um, the number in front of x squared and y squared is different. So we have a circle and we have an ellipse, which tells us that at most... Let me do that in another color. So at most with this, we could have four solutions. So it is possible to have at most four solutions. Um, it is possible to only have two solutions. You could have something like this where you have a circle and then you have an ellipse that goes something like this. Um, so in this situation, you could just have one solution if they were touching. You could have zero solutions if they don't touch at all. So at most, like I said, you can have four, you could have two, you could have one, you could have zero. Um, you could, I guess, have three if one of the sides was touching like up here and it went through in other places, but most of the time you have either four, two, or zero. So with this, what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to eliminate. In order to eliminate this, I'm going to eliminate my x terms. If we notice, we have x squared, and then we also have 12x in both of these. So in order to eliminate, all I would have to do is to get them opposite signs of each other. So I'm just simply going to take equation 1, and I'm going to subtract equation 2. So if I didn't care about showing out all the work, I would skip this step. I would just change all of the signs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the first equation exactly the same. And then the second equation, I'm going to change all the signs. And if you wanted to, you could do equation 2 minus equation 1, and then you would have positive signs. It really doesn't matter. It's just kind of a preferential thing. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and change the signs of the second one. It might be easier to change the sign of the first than you have more positive um, values that you're going to be working with, but you'll see in a minute it really doesn't matter. So with this, we would have negative 12x minus 20y plus 4 equals 0. And so then you can see when we add these two together that my x squared cancel out and my 12x cancels out, and I'm just left with a single variable y. So I have negative 18y squared minus 18y plus 36 equals 0. I'm left with a quadratic equation, which means that I could have two, one, or zero solutions. So when we solve this, what I'm going to do is because I can divide all of these by negative 18, and this is where, um, like I said, it wouldn't have mattered if we would have had the positives here, if I would have made the top one negative and the bottom one positive, um, then I would have had positive 18, positive 18, and negative 36. So either way, you end up with the same signs. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 18 just to make it easier to factor. So I have y squared plus 1y minus 2 equals 0. And when we get to this point, remember what we're looking for is two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 2 that also add up to be positive 1. So for this one, we would use positive 2 and negative 1 because we want a positive 1. If we wanted a negative 1, then we would have switched the signs. So this factors into y plus 2, y minus 1 equals 0. So for this, we can see that there are going to be two answers for y. So we know that we have two different y coordinates. And so once we get to this point, you're not done. We wouldn't square this off or anything and say that this is our answer because now we have to figure out when we plug in y into here, what are our x values for each of these equations? So the first thing that we would do is we have to pick one of the equations to work with. 
And I'm going to work with the top equation only because of the fact that the numbers are smaller. Um, and so it's just a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to choose the top equation. You could choose just as easily the bottom equation. So let me just write down the equation that I'm going to work with. And always when you're rewriting stuff, just make sure that you have all the signs correct, that you've remembered all your squares. I noticed up here I forgot my squared. Um, it happens a lot, especially when the process is longer. So always just double check, triple check. I can't tell you over the years how many times I've had um, students that they wrote the problem down wrong and so they got the wrong answer just because they wrote it down wrong. So just be careful. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to look at this one, y equals negative 2. So I'm going to take and I'm going to plug this in wherever I have a y. So I'm going to keep the x squared and then I would have negative 2 squared plus 12x and then I'm going to replace the y with negative 2 plus 32 equals 0. So this is the first equation that I'm going to solve. So we have to simplify this. This would be x squared plus 4. Remember that negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 plus 12x minus 4 plus 32 equals 0. So if we combine like terms, we're left with the quadratic x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0 because 4 minus 4 gives me 0, so those cancel each other out. So we want to factor this like we did before. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 32 that add up to be 12. Um, so that breaks down into 8 and 4. So we end up with x equals negative 8 or x equals negative 4. And so that tells me that I ended up with two different solutions. Remember that with this, we could have four total solutions here. We could have three solutions. We could have two solutions. So for this one, when I plug in negative 2 for y, and remember we always write it as x comma y, um, we could have negative 8, negative 2 is one of our numbers that works, or one of our ordered pairs that works in here. The second one is negative 4, negative 2. And we have to do the same thing with the second um, y equals. So we also have to replace that one in. So we're still not done. I know that this is a very, very long process. And sometimes when it gets to this, you look at it and you just want to quit because it looks too hard. So you have to break it down into parts. So now what we want to do is take and plug in the y equals 1 into this equation. So we would have 1 squared plus, and I just plugged it into the wrong place. See, I'm not paying attention. Um, the x squared stays the same, and then I would have the 1 squared, because I'm replacing y with 1, plus 12x, plus 2 times 1. And you could simplify this. I'm just showing out everything so you can see where I get it. And then we would just simplify. So we would have x squared plus 12x. This is going to give me 1 plus 2, which is 3, plus 32 gives me 35. And then we would go and factor. So what we're doing is we're looking again for two numbers that multiply together to give me the last number that add up to be 12. Um, so in this case, it would be 7 and 5 because 7 times 5 gives me 35. And 7 plus 5 gives me 12 in the middle. So we end up with x equals negative 7 or x equals negative 5. So when we write this out, we would have negative 7 comma 1 and negative 5 comma 1. So those, this does end up with four total solutions. There are four points. Um, so we do have a situation like this where it does intersect at four different points. Um, to check this one, it is a lot of work to check by hand. To do hand calculations, you would have to plug in all four of the points into both equations. So what I'm going to do just to kind of help us, just so that you can see that this really does work, is I'm going to use the TI Inspire. Um, you could use the TI-84. The TI-84, you would just put in your values for X and Y. Um, I'm going to use the TI Inspire, so I'm just going to pull up a calculator screen to show you how to check in here. Um, what I would do is I would take the first ordered pair, and I may have it written down on my paper differently than what I, the order that I had it in on there. Um, so the first one that I'm going to check is when x was, 
And to store, I just hit Control and Var. Uh, so I'm going to plug in the negative 7, 1 as my first one. I, I know that I wrote it in a different order um, on the board, but I'm going to use negative 7, 1 as my first. I'm checking this point first because that's how I have it written down on my paper. And I would just change that to Y. And then when I plug this in, I would just plug in my equation. So with this, we would just use the X and Y's down here. So I would do X squared plus Y squared plus 12X plus 2Y. And I'm just typing in the equation exactly as it is, plus 32, and I want to see, does this give me 0? And you can see the calculator is plugging in the negative 7 and 1, and it does give me 0. Um, let's check the other equation, the x squared, especially since we didn't use this one to solve it, um, plus 9y squared plus 12x plus 20y. Um, minus 4 and if we hit enter we can see that that also gives us 0 and then what I would do is to check the next point I would just simply change the X because um, for this one remember we had 2 that had y, y equals 1 as the answer um, because when Y was 1 we got both X was negative 7 and negative 5 so now all I would do is I would just change the negative 5 to X and then I'm going to just go back up and grab both of my equations so that you can see that when I use um, the ordered pair negative 5, 1, that it works as well as the second one also works. Okay. Um, for the other two, you would just change both of them. So I would do the negative 4. And this does take a long time to um, check. But we're going to plug in negative 4 for x, and then we would plug in negative 2 for y. So I'm using the ordered pair negative 4, negative 2. And if I go back up and I grab these and hit enter, it does work. And if I grab the other equation and hit enter, it also works. And then for the last point to check, the only thing that I have to change is the x coordinate because the y coordinate stays the same. So I'm going to change this to x, um, the x to negative 8, and then we're just going to check both of these to make sure that they really do work. Um, using a calculator like this really makes it a lot quicker because then you can see that it works in all of them. This there is a lot of room for error in these. There's a lot, a lot of room for error. So be very, very careful about looking over to make sure that you didn't make simple mistakes. Most of the time they will end up with factorable ones, not to where you have to use the quadratic formula because then it's even more difficult. As always, thanks for watching. If you have questions or you need additional help on other topics, please let me know. Um, if you get a chance, please like and subscribe.